What I like about AR tech is that there is the potential to actually take the data and visualize it in some way. What would three feet or six feet of sea level rise look like, you know, in your surrounding environment? I chose Miami because I realized this is ground zero for climate change here in the United States. It's not in the far future. By the end of the century, Miami could be completely underwater. I founded the nonprofit organization called Before It's Too Late. We use arts and technology to find creative ways to educate people and inspire them on different environmental issues. We like to do a lot of different creative projects, but probably the work that we do the most often is augmented reality and public murals. Having such a complex production of augmented reality was definitely a work in discovery. It was like, all right, we need definitely a muralist who knows how to paint. We need some 3D artists and animators. We need people who can program. People can tell this was not just an afterthought. This is like months of work to create something that is at the maximum of art and tech. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the people that interact with our murals to actually take action. AR just gives you an incredible palette, an incredible canvas that you can really manifest almost anything into. It does allow you to create another layer of reality on top of what you see. You bring up your phone and it's like a window into this other world. And basically this mirror is telling a story about sea level rise in Miami and how we're going to be affected here first. In this mirror you have two choices. You can be the change or you can make no change. And if you make no change, then what you end up seeing is the dystopian future of Miami with sea level rise, with the city in decay. But you can always go back and be the change. And if you're the change, then you can actually live a life sustainable with nature. What I try to do is always make sure that even if it's an artistic experience, it's grounded in the science. Everything is obviously artistic, but it's possible. So we are at Madison Hammock Park in Coral Gables, Florida. Right now I am standing in water and I should not be standing in water. Just a couple of decades ago, this area would have not been flooded even when it's high tide. This is just one of many examples where locals in South Florida can encounter the effects of a sea level rise. So here at Madison Hammock Park, we are collecting data specifically related to sea level rise. For example, at the GIS Center, we have unmanned aerial vehicles equipped with sensors, cameras. So we can deploy these after any flood events and we can map the area pretty soon with very high accuracy. Florida International University is one of the major research universities in South Florida. And we already have an existing large group of interdisciplinary researchers focusing on sea level rise. Our main role, the GS Center, is actually to try to apply geospatial technology to uh, transform what the scientists come up with into a more visual way so that decision makers and the public can digest them better. Our sea level rise application was one of the first ones that come out to visualize um, sea level rise in South Florida. We come up with a very simple way of visualizing what's really going to happen. If you see this blue that's occurring on the screen in your neighborhood, then you know that's water coming. I really admire Linda Chan's work. I think that when we can engage artists, we can touch our human emotions and our heart better. Hers is more of an intuitive artist approach. So I guess it's a combination of art and science together and uh, to work towards a common goal. I think sometimes when there's an urgent need, such as climate change that can threaten the entire fabric of society, that's when artists start to step up and say, I'm not just going to do art for art's sake anymore. I have to do art for you know, this issue. When you can translate data points into experiences, it starts to set in more. I think that's the potential of this tech. <laughs>